Hello ladies and gents, welcome back to day two now of DreamHack Masters Dallas. I'm Vince, joined by Dust. Once again, we're going to be taking you through all of the B-Stream action, and we're kicking things off with the best of threes. There's going to be no more best of ones. Lower bracket matches here, Easterus against Renegade. Easterus did have a bit of a rough go of it yesterday. We didn't get a chance to cast Renegade's Dust, but how are you doing after that marathon of Counter-Strike that we both endured yesterday? Yeah, indeed, it was nine and a half hours, and I feel like we're probably going to get something similar today with three best of threes. And uh, also, the sound issue should be fixed from yesterday, so no more taking a hot steamer while casting vents. Get out the bathroom. We're, we're in the real world now. We're out here. But I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was. <laughs> I guess it was a new way to listen to a broadcast. It was unique. Different flavor. That's definitely one way of putting it, yeah. I'm trying to be optimistic. But it should be fixed now, is the point. If for some reason, there's still issues, let us know. We'll try to work on it. But I think uh, last night I was able to work with production crew, do some tests, and I think uh, we got it all sorted out. And yeah, now we have Isiris versus Renegades over here in Group B. This is lower bracket round one. So this is best of three, and the loser is going home, joining the likes of Tyloo and Lucid Dream, who have already fallen here in this tournament. They have indeed. It could be potentially Renegade going out. I mean, I think Easterus coming into this were certainly one of the, I don't necessarily want to say underdog teams, but certainly one that you didn't expect to maybe go that far. Uh, they've got some very good players. We saw Noxie pull off a, a pretty sick clutch, to be fair, on Inferno. But apart from that, it was pretty one-way traffic. Um, they're playing Ents, I believe, if memory serves me correctly. It's kind of a blur of Counter-Strike yesterday, but yeah, I think they're a team that could cause Renegades some issues, but on paper, you're expecting Renegades to, to come out swinging here and, and put down a performance. Absolutely. I mean, this is a team that obviously has had some issues recently simply because they had to use a stand-in uh, due to, I think it was Visa issues with Gratis Faction. They had to use Smuya uh, for both stages of the EPL groups that they played in, and because of that, they were unable to qualify for EPL. Also, they did have Gratis Faction for them on home soil. I, I am Sydney. But again, did not have a good time there, losing their best of threes to Nip and Mouse Sports, both 0-2, and just not having a good run there at all. But really, the reason why a lot of people have a lot of hope in Renegade is just because of how well they performed at this most recent major, you know, placing top eight, beating some really good teams in the Legend stage to make it there, including taking a map off of Astralis and beating Ents and beating FaZe. Uh, had a close one with MMBR in the quarterfinals. And then after that, they, in April, had a really good run at uh, Starlighter Season 7. They had a top four finish there as well, including beating NIP phase made in Brazil and taking a map off of Navi. So good stuff. Yep, certainly a, a team on the rise. And I think that's maybe why some, some people were a bit confused as to them being in this position currently. But we are gonna be kicking things off now live in the pistol round with Renegades on the T side. Isaurus actually deciding not to go for a kit, which is a little bit unorthodox. A lot of teams will go for the defuse kit on the off chance they do lose one of these fights. But they're going to be standing tall. Jacob, though, cleaning house in mid. Two quickfire headshots with his P250. Unbelievable. Nothing they could really do about that. And that does open up mid as well, Dust. Like, basically, this is just free brain now to go wherever they do. I would love to add some inside here, Vince, but I don't have to do it yet. So. Rest in peace. Made in the meanwhile, we're waiting just underneath the window. He comes in with three. He can match and go further than Jacob. Azza whiffing pretty hard into the back of 1962, but finally we'll get the bullet that counts into the head and reverse it. Now needs to traipse over onto the site to try and clutch this. 45 seconds, the Renegade's not any great rush to get the bomb. Blanton a reverse it, lands two to finalize it out. Three sick individual performances with Jacob Mayen, but it's reversives that counts the hardest at the end. Isaurus do claim the first round of this best of three. How is the server situation looking to us? Looks like I've been able to find my way in, Vince. Just took a couple of retries, but we sorted it out. Uh, just wanted to note that this is indeed Isaurus's map pick, and this is a map that Renegades have not played a lot. So, I mean, they're moved in overpass, or they're least played, but that's two's kind of next in line. So, it's not a map that they are as comfortable with as maybe some of their stronger maps like Mirage, which we'll see next, but certainly still a capable team, but Easter is getting the better of them there. This is a great start for the majority Argentinian squad. They do have one player from Uruguay on the team as well. 
course, Baron and Max, the new additions to the roster that just came in late last year. They played EPL together, had a couple of cool results against Complexity, but haven't seen them do anything big just yet. This is their opportunity. You see them just looking to kind of hold off this catwalk at huge Renegades. UMP gonna have to swap them away. And a flashbang on his face. Liaz will finalize the kill. There'll be a bomb plant forthcoming. Jake can with a dead people. It's starting to crumble a little bit now for Easterus. Bot off the back of some sick individual plays. It's now down to Jacob with a dead eagle who is ruining dreams and hopes. Max and Mayan though. Off and about spat with three kills in quick succession. Putting it down to Jacob. Starting to run with some exquisite deagle work. Gonna have to finish it off. Flashbang out. We're gonna be pushed now from two different angles. And there's nothing he can do to contend with the MP9 close range. Easterus dodging bullets quite literally will get the bomb defused. But again, it's at great cost. Yeah, full house of frags from Max and Mayern. The new additions to the team. And the thing is, Mayern is the guy who's supposed to be the superstar player. There was actually an article written by him on the HLTV website that got published, I believe it was yesterday. Young 16-year-old player, not a lot of experience coming onto this team, but he looked so deadly in both the EPL groups he played in, despite the fact this team didn't get the results they needed to find the finals. They had a couple of cool little results on certain maps against some of the North American pro teams. And Mayern really was one of the guys that was putting up just ludicrous numbers. Very flexible rifler on T side. You'll kind of see him be a second or third entry. He's very mobile on the CT side. Him and Natsuki seem to be kind of the two players that are usually the ones doing the heavy lifting when it comes to putting frags on the board. And Mayer just wasn't there yesterday against Anson Inferno. Grant, they just got steamrolled. And I guess really no one except for maybe a couple of cool players from Natsuki was able to get much accomplished. So this is like their fresh start, right, in the lower bracket to try to assert yourself. And it's good to see Mayer and company already starting to get some kills. Yeah, it may have just taken them a little while to get settled, you know, when you're coming to an international tournament, you're playing Ents in the top three teams in the world. You can understand why they may have faltered a little bit. Now against Renegades, I'm not just going to say that Renegades are a pushover by any stretch of the imagination. They're a solid team in their own right, but as you say, maybe now they've had a chance to settle in, kind of dust off those cobwebs and, and come into this one with a, a revigored sort of look and outtake on, on how they're going to perform. Great start. I mean, winning that pistol round and, you know, getting the subsequent second round off a of defuse is going to give them confidence. Now Renegades into a half buy. Don't have too much firepower. No, not at all. A lot of gathering up here in B tunnels for Renegades. They had several smokes to try to pry their way out of these B tunnels. A few pop flashes to boot behind it. Also, mid B smoke is going to be a threat here as you do see that unfolding right now from Azza. Smokes on either side of the next match. It's definitely a B split coming in. What can Mayer and company do to hold off against this? They've done well with this incendiary to slow Renegades down, but this attack is still coming. So there's a big rotation underway. There is, but they're going to be looking to just sledgehammer through onto B. All the players stacking through tunnels. It's easy picking for Mayan's orb. He's got three, nearly a fourth, but Max takes it away from him. As a, has got a UMP to his name and maybe could do a bit of damage on the retreat, but with 50 seconds to go and no control of the bomb, they actually don't have to move. They can sit in these positions. They can wait forever, knowing that Azza has to show his hand. And into the next round, they're going to have a bite. UMP, not exactly fantastic on a map like Dust 2, where you want to have the AKs at longer range. Azza's going to go in, and well, that's the end of his life, and it's going to be a 3-0. Indeed, good start from Isurus. Handling that mid-B very well. The incendiary certainly helped because it slowed down the split. It caused that smoke to begin to fade and CT spawn and allowed Isurus to really be able to pick up on both angles of that attack. Now the guns, though, for Renegades. Grass Faction will have the AWP. We need to see him in action, man. He's had to kind of sit on the sidelines due to these issues. Now he's finally back fully on the team. This team has their full squad. Need to look out for him to be patrolling with that up. Obviously, Jacob and Haz are going to be some of the main action creators, while Liaz and JKS typically playing the edge of the map on default, as you can see here. So JKS this time around, helping Jacob out through lower B tunnels to try to engage towards Cat. Bosky might give him something as well. What's hopping up for info? That's a decent grenade, though. Going to chunk JKS up to 66. Jacob loses 18 health. So worth the $300 investment. Gonna be pushing behind the Molotov, Granite's Faction. Mac down to 18 health. Looking good on the early skirmishes on the South American squad. And now they're gonna be stacking over on the catwalk side. I mean, this is tried and tested. It's a default play. If ever you've seen one on Dust 2, it's the go to for many teams. And you better believe the Easterus are in position and ready to defend this. 
indeed they are. A player Goose, a player on the site. They have long A control as well at 1962. So they have all their bases covered. Just about the fit hit gets this initial cross. There could, there's a smoke on CT spawn. There could be a drop down play implemented. But actually the full attack is forming the site. And Oxy's not going to have too many issues with that. The flashbang's not effective enough. As is the only player that has tried to crack open the site. They're going to get a bomb flash. He's been here before they line up. 1962. Going to spray him down. JKS in no man's land. Has been pummeled by Max. And Easterus Gaming with another successful retake in beauty. Almost a team ace. 1962 with an extra one, though. May or not involved in that. But certainly been involved this game. Eight kills and four rounds played. Also, some people, including myself, are wondering why this player was called 1962, and I was informed that it's because it's the year his father was born. And so kind of a oh, memorial okay. name, so to speak. Uh, so that's definitely very cool. I can respect that. Represented. Yeah, absolutely. It makes sense as well. We were wondering about this yesterday, if there's like some historical significance to that year. So fair enough. Double AWP in play here, Vince. We did see this a little bit yesterday, but not often because they didn't have the money. They were just getting pummeled, so may or not have the second one. But that's a cheeky little peek from guys faction on the edge of the scope. But so is that from 1962, who nearly gets two kills. That's going to be information that's gathered for the rest of the team. Now that Master of Can they hold on to B, Flashbang's going to be effective at pushing back the window peekers. But the bomb is the last player in, so they can't try and get a bomb down anytime soon. That kill, though, onto Noxie is going to open up B nicely. There's a smoke in the eyes of the player on double doors, and there is actually a boost over there. They're going to replenish the smoke. The boost is looking and trying to execute off a player that's on the cross, but they can't see anything whatsoever. And at this point, they only have one smoke and flash to play with. So they're going to pick up the Fallen Orb, have a two Orb set up into the next round and save. They don't feel like they have to go for this. They've got a four round buffer. For me, this is the right call. Yeah, retaking B just not ideal with two AWPs, limited utility, and a man disadvantage. We've talked time and time again about how hard retaking B on Dust 2 really can be, even when you have slight edges, perhaps. So definitely a good idea, as you noted, to back off as you have a big lead. Great round here, particularly Gratis Faction. Just kind of sneaking on the edge of that smoke. Didn't have the AWP this time around, but still effective with the AK-47. Both the kills on that round that mattered most. Again, good to see him back on the team. This team was showing so much promise, such a positive trajectory. You know, briefly, they're ranked number five in the world thanks to their major performance and how well they did at Star Ladder. But then things got kind of rocked by Gratis Faction having to step away and then having to use stand-ins. Now they finally have the boys back together. And will it be a yeah, the boys moment, Vince? They need to have the front of Dallas here to kind of sink back up with what they were doing before. Versus is going to try and stop that from occurring. One kill, the Asprey's back. Long control, by and large, is becoming inevitable for Renegade. Reverse it, Molotov back multiple times. Good usage of those fire bombs. And now it's really down to Noxie. He does have an AWP, however, and they're going to have to respect that. Jacob's going to stay here while the other two players start to dart away. This has drawn up two players over onto the A side and a third in the form of Mayan with a Desert Eagle or duo. Ah, it's going to be difficult for them to retake, but what a shot from Jacob. Noxie peeks up a bit too much and gets his head taken off. Nice reward for Jacob. Going to double smoke so they can cover the entire cross. And now looking for more spins. Praying Max. He's a man on fire right now, Jacob. He's come under scrutiny in the past. There's nothing wrong with this. He is putting Renegades in great shape. A two-on-one, still doable for Mayan to come back into this round. And he's if he's playing the long con, he's rotating through long. But I think Leah's a step ahead. He can definitely hear this. Mayan's dead. There's no way he knew Leah's was in that position. And Renegades, thanks to Jacob, gonna get the round. Yeah, well handled through and through from Renegades. Renegades at the major displayed their ability to play defaults out really well. They have super nicely established roles. They're good at isolating things, finding control, carving out small pieces, and then marching forward from that methodically. And that's exactly what happens there. Also, just a little bit of individual shine from Jacob. I feel like his kind of resurgent story is very much intertwined with that of Renegades. Both of these parties kind of together are working to reinvigorate their careers. And it's been so cool to see Jacob back at a high level. I feel like he has been one of the biggest contributing factors to Renegade's rise, being that really strong kind of entry type fragger next to Azza. Great those openings for this team. He did it there in spades. 
Such a nasty headshot onto Natsuki, an opera at range. Solid flash into P. There was a moment where you thought maybe the CZ drive-by would yield two times, but just the one ninth shot from 1962. Onto an unsuspecting JKS, and now Max is back in the cycle for the P250. How in the actual hell is he still alive? How is he going to kill? And he still has 100 HP. This is actually possible. The $300 pistol may be the difference maker, and Max goes in and cleans house. That is ridiculous from the youngster. How? Yeah, that's actually the exact question you have to ask. How does that happen? This should be Renegade's cleanup round. You did the hard part in the previous with Jacob's Heroics, but this is a round that should have been gifted to you. There was not much there, yet somehow, someway, Isiris finds a way to slug their way back into it. They have the double AWP back in play now. Renegade are the ones reeling from it economically. Two of their players are not well equipped. The Galeo and a CZ. If they lose here, they have to save. This is where Isiris, if they can find this round, they can really start steaming out in front on their map from here with us, too start working towards the upset that was such a big round still in sort of disbelief that not only was he able to get the pt50 kills but he was on 100 percent hp for so long dust not a single bullet hit him must have some kind of guardian angel on that a site right now i'm being afflicted to both teams max coming out worse for wear but noxy perched up on catwalk he delivers a fatal blow and pieces out molotov tossed in it's a play you see time and time again on Dust2. Going to be effective once again. Just forced them off on their push, and now they're having to come up with a plan B. Yeah, they're still trying to see if Gratisfaction can sniff something out of this AWP up the catwalk, but no one from Isurus has given him much. Meanwhile, Mayern has an aggressive angle on B. He misses his opportunity. But he is able to at least retreat and not give a kill away over to Renegades and maintain this man advantage. He's also slowed down Renegades' pursuits, limited their options. Renegades will now just have to focus up here on Cat. They put some slope down as if they're going to do some type of Cat cross, but in all actuality, it could be mid B. In fact, it is. They're rolling out. Yeah, they have bamboozled Isaris. It puts it into a three on two because one player is waiting back. Max, though. Bit of an odd angle, weren't anticipating that's gonna get the first, but they need this next kill to come down on B side. It has. There's enough time to plant, even though reversive has found Azza and dealt with him. A two-on-two falls upon us. No grenades left remaining though for Easterus Gaming. 1962 gonna have to pivot off from the window side on his lonesome gets gratification. Down spins around and Liaz next to fall. Easterus Gaming are no joke. They are here to stay. They handled a chaotic situa situation so very well. When you start putting pressure on catwalk like that, and you don't have any forward information. You you can't really know if it's going to be a cat cross or a mid B split. That's what makes Dustin so dangerous. That's what makes him so dangerous. The fact that it's so hard to rotate and have information as a CT team. It's also hard to retake B, right? Yet they pull it off there. It certainly hurt that Renegades had no tunnel pressure. All of it was coming from door and window. It allowed Isiris to get a couple of kills on the take itself by a little bit of time. And even though Renegades found three frags quickly to get that bomb planted, Isiris was so fast to rotate in that two on two. They had a player in B tunnel so very quickly. Now Renegades are able to buy because of that bomb plant. They didn't get forced to save, but they've already lost a player thanks to Natsuki's aggression at middle. Or mayor, excuse me. Natsuki's the one now holding lower B tunnels. It's an odd decision, though, isn't it, Dust? Because Gratisfaction wasn't peeking up with an AWP. He's peeking up with an AK. At that range, I mean, the AWPs are always going to have the upper hand. That's a free kill on a map that is starting to spiral out of control. Mm. You've had all of these just... plants. I think it's Go just ahead. him not expecting a CT to face with an AWP. A lot of CTs, will, they'll just jump across, right? So he's hoping he could just spam some AK shots and get lucky. But as you noted, it definitely cost him dearly. Yeah, it just seems like a, a bit of a, an unnecessary risk, but hey, such as Gamma Strike, the damage to the smoke is ridiculous. Reversive and Mayan stacking down bullets on mid. And Renegades have collapsed once again. The bomb in an untenable position for JKS. Tantalizingly close, but Mayan will put an end to this round, and it's a clean sweep again. Not looking good for the boys here, Vince. Renegades, of course, losing their best of one yesterday to G2 on train. It was a very close game. Went into overtime. They actually made a big comeback to put it into overtime.
unable to come up with the victory in the end. That's why they find themselves here and now. And again, Dust2 not really towards the top of their pool. A very comfortable map, though, for Isiris in regional play. And they are certainly flexing that now as they're up 7 2 and they have Renegades on the ropes economically now. Just some upgraded pistols and limited utility. They've been countered trying to go fast long, and now they have to re-aggress with just some small utility, but the positioning for me, Sirius, is so great. It's a solid way to break the deadlock on long, though. Liar's going to take the Desert Eagle and shatter 1962. Both Orcs still in play, but Isra is still very much a threat to contend with. Two smokes, it's enough to cover the cross on the engage, but it's going to be more of a problem with the orbs being able to perch up and no flashbangs there to deter them to force their back to look away. You assume they're just going to get destroyed on the on the approach here, guys. Like, surely there's no way that Renegades can get close enough, but actually, Max, he's decided to back away. This is going to leave all Oloxi. Now realizes, hold on a second, they might be pushing long. Start to spray through the smoke. Is it going to be enough, though? Reverse it. Lifting on his spray. Finally going to get the kill at the cost of 89 of his HP. And the other player on A has gone down. noxy has been dealt with now. And M4 is able to be used against the CT who are oncoming, upcoming through the ramp. Mayan. Up, slight gap in the smart to try and exploit this. The timing is on his side. Looking for more with a jump shot. Won't be happening. And Asa, snake in the grass now. Going to slither his way in for two kills with a CZ. And Renegade's going to get a third round that didn't look possible. Has yeah, some revenge on a round that Asuris got like that a little bit earlier on in the half. Just getting a lot done with very little. Using those smokes to cross, Isiris was just kind of playing back quad and cat. They were allowing the side take, but just hoping that they could hold angles and take duels at superior firepower and either shut down everything or at least have a really solid approach on the retake. Unfortunately for them, Grass Faction found an M4 and teed off, and then Azza, he was the checkmate move. The late flank up cat that was unexpected gets the final two kills to be the closer. And that's a round now for Renegades after losing three in a row. Now, Renegades have never streaked more than two together this entire half. They've really struggled. Several of these rounds have been dominant. You know, out of the seven rounds that these series have won, they survived with all five or four players in half those rounds. So it's not been a good time for Renegades, but that could be what they need to jump back in now that these series have little to work with. Right, and I'll feel even though a lot of these rounds have, have gone tantalizingly close and been disappointing with diffuses, that they have got in, they have had opportunities. It hasn't been a complete shutout. 7-3 could easily be more like a 5-5 scoreline. That's what they've got to hold on to. Solid flick from Grass Faction. Onto Noxie, who peaked one too many times. Lack of firepower on Easter, as you mentioned, so they will have a buy in the next round, but can they do any damage on this one? Mayan has been having a sublime performance 16 and 5. Can't take anything away from him. Top fragging by quite some distance. But of course, Renegade's going to take this one slow and steady. Does. They don't want to overextend. They don't want to walk into some kind of a stack. Indeed, taking their time. But Mayer has drawn blood here and controlled the tunnels, kind of suffocating Renegades and forcing them really to commit to short. Especially considering that Reverse have has control of the long tunnels. The problem is because they're spread so thin, 1962 must defend the A side essentially alone with just the Deagle. He's already taken significant damage. Did dish out someone to gratisfaction as well. 1962 felt like he had to peek. Und understandable. He knows his players and circling his position. Isaris, do you have an AK? If we save that into the next round, would be a really solid take. They don't have a kit. They don't really have nades over the Molotov. So throw the expendable CZ against the wall. That's fine. I'm surprised that Max is even up close here with the AK. I suppose they're trying to take as much economy away from Renegades as possible, but I, I can't help but feel that the AK would have been more useful for Isaris going into the next round. Certainly. I think you could make an argument for that. I think another part of it might just be that you know Renegade's money is low, so you're trying to force as many rebuys as you can. Seeing as you're ahead, you want to kind of keep it that way. Once you get a round victory a little bit later and they get that one round loss bonus reset, you could really have, you know, an easier time. So a little bit of long-term thinking, I guess. I'll have to see if it pays off for them. They do have two ops again, though. We've already seen this in play. It's heavy investment. It does put Noxie and Mayan down. 
in terms of utility. They have no kits across the team as well. Firepower dust, but there's not much room for error here for Easterus Gaming. They lose this round. Renegades are right back into this half. A lot hinges on this one, though, Vince. Again, Renegades lose here. A couple of their players are going to be very low on cash going forward. But same could be said for Easterus. In fact, they're the ones that are probably sweating more. Even with the three-round loss bonus, if they lose here, it's not going to amount to much. So this round could be a bonus one for the games. Jacob gets slashed through mid from reversives. Org, about 28, he will fall. Leah's taking a bit of chip damage as well. Still some nades in play from Easterus, but their last smoke has now been deployed in mid. That's going to leave them a lot of the round to deal with without any utility. Molotov in from Azza. This is designed to try and clear that close angle where the Mocky Corpse like to play, but not. He had a slightly different angle, missed his chance, will back away. Got tagged for 20 by an AWP. That's crazy. I don't know if it hit the corner of the wall. I'm not sure. So, that, yeah. That's pretty nutty. Either way, Renegades are certainly looking to storm the front of Catwalk. They do have the smokes to potentially drop down on CT spawn and take the low angle against Natsu, which makes AWP work so hard when you have to run on Catwalk and your lower side. Moxie flashbang wiping it out of his eyes and coming out with three kills. Or actually two. If it had been three, maybe it could have stopped this bomb plant. Instead, it's going to be a two on three post plant. Brad Faction pops up, flashbang in the eyes. Max last player of Brad Faction. No scope through the box. That's more like it. That's why they've been missing this man so much recently. Big play there from Guys Faction. That got very scary because they didn't really get good utility on the A ramp. So Natsuki felt pretty comfortable just kind of perching with the AWP. There was no one attacking his low side from CT spawn. They did not drop down. So he got to focus his efforts on the cross itself. He got two. And an aid frag came in from 1960. So they had a three on two there for a brief moment. But then Gratis Faction just blows it up with some great up-close op work and it forces e on onto a save. They are just going to be running together towards Long A. Could be a lineup for Azza to see this. My goodness, he's won the lottery, hasn't he? You may as well just break through the smoke. Oh, I got three kills. Right, nice one. They're obviously <laughs> going to know it's an eco. They're expecting weapons in the next round. Yeah. It's, it's, it's a play that not many people do as well, and I'm not sure why. You don't really lose anything from it. It's worthwhile taking the punt, and there you go. Asli just gets four kills. A little stat padding for him. He'll appreciate that on his score sheet, I imagine. Speaking of which, talking about some good performance in this game, Mayern, the young 16-year-old mechanical god from Argentina, near 150 ADR this game and 17 frags and 13 rounds played, so he's definitely done work. And there's another one. Great little head boost there. Catches Asa over the smoke. Yeah, speaking of the man, there's another one to add to his belt. Yeah, he's been so good. Mainly with the Orc. Ah, and there's the Orc. Showing that he's versatile. He can play with the Orc just as well. Jacob goes to try and peek, tries to challenge him, and comes up worse for wear. Gratis faction, flashbang over. May force out one of these Orpers into the open. Maybe they can divide and conquer mid. But Isaris, they've got two picks. There's no reason for them to do anything here. They can just stay in position and wait. Yeah. That's really unfortunate for Renegades. You're just trying to get to Catwalk. Like, just trying to establish some basics as on Dusk 2 is that it's kind of the bread and butter of a T-size. Getting control of the cat steps and opening up your options for A splits or the mid-B action. But here, it's just Mayern facing you headstrong at middle. And that we're not even trade that. And that, that's really unfortunate. Very inefficient. Now they're going to suffer big time. But that nade is going to help this round along as well for you, Cirrus. Nice gap in the smoke. They're going to try and exploit, but... Isaris not falling for it. 1962, big kill. That would have allowed them to pinch that onto the site. Instead, it's going to be one dimensional. Smoke now dissipating, as will JKS. Head gets ripped off. Renegades have been eviscerated. Their four round win streak has come to an abrupt end. Indeed, it has finally, Isaris. Right when Renegades were looking to tie up the game, say, nah, nah, nah. We're going to stay ahead. And you know that that gap, I just feel like everyone knows about it now. I mean, that, that you know, type of one-way smoke on that catwalk has been used so, so much. Every now and then you'll still catch people crossing through that, but a lot of teams are very aware of it, so they'll just kind of hold back on the corner and not face to allow that to have any impact. 
But yeah, final round of the half is among us here. Everyone's fully decked out as far as equipment value goes. That shouldn't be a factor. For a last round, this is pretty much as good as it gets from a spectator's viewpoint. No team is limping into this round. They're both very much powerful and stacked. A lot rests on this. Renegades, if they can bring it back to an 8-7, will be very happy with how this half has ended. Considering that it started very poorly at 4-0 down. And then 7-2 behind. They have certainly stuck in there. Shown tenacity and grit. These are a stoke. Flashback. Noxie somehow still alive. Gratisfaction. Gonna have to go one better, but the bomb's also down. He's gonna push through the Molotov. The aggression pays off. He's now making a way for the rest of his team to follow, but Mayan's gonna close the door in their face. Shutting down Gratis Faction, still two players over here. The only reason this round is still open is because of Gratis Faction's aggression. Indeed, they did not expect the second half of Mayern to be there. He's normally been mid or B. They saw Natsuki's AWP on Cat. They think it's all done. Maybe a rifle watching the toss, but Mayern, that adjustment, that tweak in his positioning has allowed Isiris to have a three-on-two retake here. I love that little adjustment, but will it become fruitful? Can they actually pull the retake off? Have a smoke and a flashbang. No nades for renegades, and they're both on catwalk. No, that smoke is perfectly planted for both of them. But Lias comes out with one and a second and a third. All oh, that transfer of spray is sublime. What a great play from Lias to keep this game as close as possible. The support player, the guy that normally isn't going to shine very much, he does stand up in the spotlight to help keep this one a close contest. This is Dust and Vince. We do have to sh bring you a short break, but when we come back, we'll bring you the second half here of this lower bracket, best of three. So stay tuned, folks. We'll be right back. We are back. Isaurus Gaming, Renegades, best of three first map, and we're heading into the second half of Dust 2. We've been very fortunate, Dust. We've had some pretty sick moments over the last day or so. And that first half was no different. I had some big, big moments there. May and 20 kills, some crazy clutches, some crazy highlight plays. That big one from Lies right at the end is the one that I'm still thinking about. I mean, that half could have looked a lot different at 9-6 for Isiris if it wasn't for that just triple kill spray down. Again, it came from an unexpected guy, more known for support. Actually, funny enough, Lies is number one in support percentage in the world for 2019 land play. So just the amount of rounds that he does support type factors, you know, sacrificing guns to buy grenades or, you know, utilizing grenades for his teammates. He, he is at the top of the board for that statistic. And if your supportive player is still capable of pulling off stuff like that, it is going to send shivers down the spine of any teams going against Renegades. But can they hold on the CT side? This pistol would be a solid tick in that box, Mayan. He is still... Cracking off with headshot, two kills, 22 in total. He is carrying this team hard. Can Jacob answer the call? He started the half after pistol in such fine form and sort of burnt out towards the end. Azra and JKS still alive, but having to rotate through mid. And as in JKS to cover as Spong is playing, they both will come up catwalk together. As it does have a kit that buys them a little bit of extra time, but it's no utility, right? It's all going to come down to aim duels. And Max even has a USP now picked up for range. As is hunting for heads. Will anyone bite? Will anyone peek him? Yes, they will. Gets the first. JKS is going to avenge that frag. They know where Noxie is. He did fire off a couple of block shots. And there we have it. The headshot will sum it up. Easterus pick up both pistol rounds. That's going to be so huge. And last time they strung the pistol round to a 4-0 start. They did not get ecoed. They were able to establish the opening buy round also. So if that were to hold up in this second half, that would put them well out in front. And now they're on the T side, which is the side that, generally speaking, is more favored on Dust 2 wasn't there for Renegades. I felt like they just struggled to establish themselves. Their A executes were a bit lackluster. They weren't necessarily implementing their utility as well as they probably should have on the A ramp and the bomb sites. They also got disrupted a lot up middle or are taking aggression on the extremities. So I felt like Isiris really did kind of dominate the bulk of that half. It wasn't until the very end, the last, you know, four to six rounds that Renegades finally kind of got something going. So I'm curious here, are they going to be able to be the ones taking initiative on the CT side to 
try to get back in the game. And interestingly, Isaris win the pistol and they call a tactical timeout straight afterwards. Something you don't see a great deal of. To try and fully establish where they're going next. What decisions they're going to come through with. Mag 7, couple of scouts in the meanwhile for Renegade. No kits and lack of nades, but do have enough firepower to make this sting. And of course, the scout, so very prolific on maps like Dust 2. It's really a, a gun that can do so much damage. It's highly underrated for many people. The assist master vents. It really is, yeah. Because if you're tagging people with scouts and you have like eagles and CZs, it's so easy to finish those players off. Like they have to be so cautious of, of going into sites after that. It's also, what did we affectionately dub this? No armor scout, the, was it the glass stinger? Yeah, I think I was, we said that at all, didn't we? Yeah, because glass cannon, obviously, for AWP, no armor. But yeah, we'll do the glass stinger. Isn't that like the sword in The Hobbit? That's sting, isn't it? Something like, like glows blue with orcs come by. I don't think their scouts glow blue though, Vince. I'm not even sure. <laughs> well, I, I, I'm sorry, mate. I, my my Lord of the Rings is not great. Mine's not either. That's why I'm not even sure I got that right. <laughs> we'll have to see <laughs> if uh, Easterus can get onto the A site. It's going to be a stack from Renegade. All five players are here. It's going to be confrontation. It's going to be carnage. And Jacob is cleaning up with a Mag 7. But Noxie and Mayan. Gonna keep their team in this. There's the jump shot from Azza into the head of Mayan. The bomb goes sprawling. 1962's gonna come in now. He's been tagged frag. Two jumping frags for Renegade. Kangarooing through this round. The boys are back. Oh man. You love to see it and you hate to see it at the same time, Vince. I don't know what's more tilting. Getting knifed in the pack, getting Zeus, or getting jump scouted. It's just like. It's just one of those things that's a part of the game that can be so, so frustrating. And I feel like the A platform on Dust 2 is the most abusive position for that type of play. Maybe B Apartments Mirage you could also throw in there, but you always got to worry about the jump piece when you, you can never feel safe on an A platform. We have to see if now Isaris can live by the scout. They've certainly died by it. And yeah, as you say, like that's one of the, the other reasons why the scout is so dangerous on this map because there are angles where you can really exploit the jumping accuracy of it. It'll be harder, of course, to crack open sites with a scout as opposed to defend them, and Moxie's already been pummeled by his opposite numbers scout. Grass faction's gone down, Azza with the AK using it against the oncoming South Americans. He's gonna be putting bullets to faces, but Noxie gonna give them a taste of their own medicine with the scout. Max, the meanwhile with the Desert Eagle, it's starting to crumble for Renegades. Isaurus waking back up again, showing the individual mechanical skill with these guns, Liaz. He's pulled off some big plays, but he's gonna have to go a step further if they're gonna retake this. He needs Jacob to get up close as well. He can't do this alone. He's being faced by multiple players. Jacob far too slow. And now he's pretty much just setting up for a save. That ended with a bit of an anticlimactic whimper. It certainly did. And it hurts Renegades a lot to not be able to string together in a row. That means this kind of economic game of chickens going to continue. Oh, get nothing actually with that AUG. Doesn't even get to save it. Maybe they could have got some upgraded pistols around the AUG and tried to pull off some kind of play in this round. But now as it stands, you kind of have to take the full save. You kind of have to concede. In the past, you would kind of just keep force buying until someone won two rounds in a row. But now it's so hard for them to do that. And they will. That's why if you were going to do this, why doesn't Jacob just run away with the AUG? Yeah, I... I, I can't answer that for you. I'm, I'm a bit dumbfounded by witnessing him go back in, guys. So confusing. They're going to go for a fast play, maybe anticipating the boss fight. Surely on another force is going to come out successful. Surely this isn't going to happen. That's a beautiful flashbang. The dink from JKS is going to go in, finish off what he started. But back to 1962. Going to bring some sanity back onto the server. Finally, it seems the rifles will prevail. Finally, it seems. The team with the better weapons will move through and win the round. Gratis faction, P215 in smoke. Wrong side of the doors as far as he's concerned. We know he's an aggressive player and he doesn't mind pushing smoke. He's got the right idea, but slightly too high with his aim. And Easterus will take a three round lead. Well, the war is over, Vince. At least the economic war at the beginning. Renegades will have to retreat and take a full save here, which allows Isiris to steamroll out a little bit further. 
That's a good choice for a B tunnel zigzag. Like, unless they're stacking and it's going to work out well, there's really no utility to stop you from running out the tunnel. Later on, obviously, you worry about smokes and incendiaries blocking your way in. But on a round like that, you can get away with it. And that will be rewarded with what should be an easy time. They've bypassed the A stack for now. They're getting into B, so that this should be done. Easy say they bypass the start, but they have been flashed out, and there is going to be an AK 47. No Kevlar for it to work off. This would be an unreal upset if Renegades got this round somehow going in their favor. You'd feel they want to keep this AK 47. They're at least going to file in the USB to see if they can get something to stick, but it's a complete massacre. They're being slapped aside, as is now going to use that AK 47, but here is the flank from Mac. Going to get them a four round lead, but there's going to be a bite on the horizon for Renegade. Yeah, full house of frags from the two newcomers to the team. Mayor in particularly important there because it got a, a slight bit scary, I guess, when they got the initial kill and got an AK in the middle. But then Mayor stops that window spill out, stops the USPs from being able to swarm the site and, you know, be their most dangerous. You know, one USP, no big deal. A bunch of them, death by a thousand paper cuts can ensue. So it's good on Mayor to catch it. And then Max, obviously, with kind of the checkmate flank up middle to shut any final hopes down. But now we have the full buy. Renegades will be with Augs of Plenty and AWP on Gratisfaction. Need to see him get rolling. He had some big plays in the first half despite the fact that his KD ratio isn't going to leap off the page. If he can get aggressive here off Catwalk or, you know, take some forward angles and, and, and create some opening kills for Renegades, that's what they'll need to kind of roll back out. Also, you know, JK, the JKM. Jacob. Man, it's like him and JKS are on the same team, so I just get ruined sometimes. <laughs> Yeah, it is surprising. Like, it is, also, it, is it would help if I could speak some English. Like, that would really be, you know, helpful as a commentator, I think. If, if I could do that, that would <laughs> be really what I need. So, we got there in the end. You know what, Vince? Just just take it away. I'm out. <laughs> I don't think we're going to have to wait too long, Dust, because it's going to be an aggressive play again from Easterus. On to be like Jacob, the man in question. The tongue twister. He's going to try and unravel this round. For Easterus Gaming, but Max says, nah, bro, we're, we're just fine. We're gonna get two entries, we're gonna get the bomb plant, and you're gonna have to save. So it's gonna be a 13 8 lead. And the Argentinians plus Max, who of course is Uruguayan, are in very good shape. This is their choice of map, though, Dust. Like, we have to mention mm -hmm. that again. It's not a map that Renegades are necessarily brilliant on or have a huge amount of um, information on, but. Sure. Still, you, you thought Renegades might take them to the Y. This is starting to look like a bit of a blowout now. Oh, it really is. And yeah, I mean, you're right. Like, this is a map that, again, Renegades aren't super well known for. But still, I mean, they have an okay record on it. They are typically going to be playing against, you know, bigger names than the people over at Isura. So, exactly, you'd expect them to have a better fight than this. But they are really struggling here. Luckily for them, Mirage is up next. And that's very much their home. This is way on the most played. Their best record. You know, outside of Train, it's probably their most dangerous map. And they've, they've beaten some really elite level teams on Mirage at times. Actually, you know, for me, that was a really big part of how they did so well at Katowice was being able to use Mirage. They beat Astralis on Mirage, actually, the best of three at Katowice. So that will at least provide them maybe somewhat of a safety net in the series. But they could also still fight back here on Dust 2 events. They, they do have a full buy up here except for JKS and Jacob. You can save those guns over if they can make some plays. It, it's, it's not too far of a golf between these two teams just yet. Oh, absolutely. Dust 2, of course, is a map that we've seen so many comebacks on over the years. The teams on the CT side, but... Noxy getting the first pick is going to be counteracted by Grad's faction. Lack of nades is going to be an issue, but Jacob puts that CZ to use. Going to be able to trade across now to an orb. Liaz, just before the smoke bloom, 1962 goes for an aggressive pick, and it's... All starting to collapse a little bit for Easterus Gaming. Probably you saw Renegades maybe bowing out. Now they've stacked up. That's a huge boost to their economy and also their weaponry. And they pick up a free second AWP, and that's exactly the type of round you need if you're Renegades to get back into the race because guess what? If you win this round and you get to 10, the money's getting a little bit low there for Easterus. Natsuki with only $50 left, Reversa with only $1,200 left. One round, you know, two round loss bonus still gonna make it a little bit difficult. I mean, maybe they'll, st I mean, they'll get a full buy still, but it'll start draining as much money. Reserve cash is gonna start burning. And that's where eventually Renegades will earn themselves kind of a freebie if they can win a couple in a row from this one forward.
it's all about that consistency at this point, isn't it? Renegades, sure, they, they get that bullet in the chamber and fire it off successfully, but they've got to put a string together. If they can see this round, all of that previous success is for naught. And they are in trouble. These risk gaming will know this too. It's going to be a tense round. A lot on the line, of course. The winner progresses, the loser does not. Jacob looking at mid. Has Azza there on CT side. And they're going to be setting up for a catwalk play again, it would seem here, for East Risk Gaming. It does seem that way. How good will it be? Renegade struggled on that catwalk crosses. They didn't use their ability very well. Can East Risk, you know, do the drop down smoke, add a third route to their attack, force a lower angle you have to peek as Renegades while also maintaining vision on the cat cross? Can they get the Molotovs they need on the site to push them out of position? That's what they need to make this efficient. Well, JKS getting that first kill is so huge. The flashback is solid. He's in the flames. But he is going to rise from the ashes. Renegades, in the meanwhile, though, have done a really solid job of keeping their noses in front. Moxie, last player, going to fake the bomb. This is out, and that shot looked like it probably should have hit. But Renegades were going to swarm him anyway. So now Easterus are in trouble. Couple plays very low. Big round there from Renegades to hold. JKS actually was flushed out by fire, but able to kind of play around it, get a couple of extra kills with the AWP that Easterus probably weren't accounting for. And JKS has actually had a bit of a rough game. This is a guy that has, you know, been the franchise player, I feel like, for Renegades. He's been one of the longest standing guys on the team. In fact, at this point, I guess, yeah, it's him and Azar, like the only two guys that, you know, have been here really since the beginning. And I know JKS had kind of a brief period where he was struggling a bit, but the bulk of his career, he's been known as the rock of this team. You know, the guy who was always putting up his numbers, you know, the very clutch player, kind of the more passive force of the team. The, again, the, the very much the foundation that the rest of the team kind of launches off of. But he's had a couple of off events recently, and he's had a cold game here. And he did get him back to the level he was playing at at Katowice and at Charlotte in Season 7. He's putting up those ridiculous numbers. They need that now. I suppose that's the extra gear that they could shift into, though, right? Does Like, if JKS does wake up, then he's first in trouble. That's been tagged early on, though, down to 56. He's going to be turning his attention to tunnels, which is where the bulk of Isaris are currently residing. He's going to spot him, but in... Oh my goodness, 1962 CZ's him off the server, and it's going to be a second to follow. Renegades, it's a, it's a pistol that has just taken the B-Site away from them, and they had orbs, they had such a huge investment, and they have to save. Follow events again. I told you that with the economy the way that it was, eventually, kind of a freebie would come Renegade's way. They would get an easy round, they would start catching up to you serious as economy. This was that very moment, yet somehow 1962 just falls to the walls in the B bomb site and gets two entries with the CZ. And now he gets a free AWP to carry over. Now they're going to be able to upgrade their weapons, they're going to pick up a free AUG as well. Yes, Renegades do save three guns, and yes, they do have enough money on JKS to still get a full buy in the next round. But he's serious or just one round away from map point now. So you can't afford any more mistakes if you want to handle this thing in regulation. They already had an overtime game earlier on against G2 on the train. They don't want to have to do that again. So this next round is just so pivotal for Renegades. He's serious, man. They have been so impressive. This is what we wanted to see. This is more attuned to the serious I saw at EPL that showed hints of promise when they were beating Complexity. They had a cold one yesterday, but this one, they're, they're looking real hot right now, particularly Mayor. He has been so good. Yeah, he, he's been so impressive. He has slowed down a little bit, considering he had 22 kills or 20 kills at the end of the first half. But other players have stepped up. We're now starting to see Max show what he's capable of doing. And yeah, that last round, JKS just seems like he's lacking a bit of confidence. That peak was so late and so delayed and the reaction speed wasn't there. You're expecting him to land those kind of shots. That being said, you got to put that deep in the back of their mind and focus on the matter at hand, which is 14-10 deficit. Flashbang does afford JKS the opportunity to cross mid. Noxie could have had him otherwise. And this time they're mixing it up again, Dust. They're looking for a potential split onto A with three players strong on long doors. Exactly, and they can pull enough attention to catwalk. They'll really force 
Diaz to kind of be the only defender there. Everyone else about to focus their attention on the catwalk. But as it stands, Diaz has satisfaction. We're actually looking to play the threat of the long aim. Not a bad little maneuver. It gets them two kills. It gets them the advantage they need. Oh, Gravis faction uncharacteristically misses the easiest shot, but does get it on the second time of asking. Doesn't get punished for the miss. Noxy. Nice opening kick, but he loses 96 health. That's the cost that he has to pay. Let's get the ball. Save, in my opinion. Yeah, uh, definitely. It really would for the next round, considering how poor the economy is on the rest of the side. But maybe he backs himself. Though. Yeah, that's it. Maybe he backs himself to, to maybe get this. If he can get up to B, take down Jacob, who's actually moving out of here. Yeah. So it's going to be a bomb plant. Absolutely a bomb plant. Now holding off the retake with Jacob having B tunnels control in a three on one. Don't see that happening. That would be a miracle play. But yeah, the economy he's going to learn from this plant certainly great. So in these kind of situations, you kind of have to play aggressively. You've got low HP. You know there's going to be ordnance on the CT side. You've got to take the fight to them. At least the first kill or two kills. So it wouldn't surprise me if Noxie does go for some very ballsy peaks and plays because he knows each second that passes is a second that Renegades get closer. He had the right idea. He went for the peak and they tag Azza, but it was through the doors. I need yeah, to get just, on that frag. He that was, was dead just ending. unwinnable. Yeah, exactly. Because Jacob yeah. would have just peaked. Oh, two shots or five, so. No way to win that. But again, at least he gets the economy for his whole entire team, which gets him an AWP still. And then there's more money to go around for his other teammates to still buy in this round. Reverso's a little bit low on fun, so he's not going to be as well equipped. Everyone else should be fine. Double AWP now in play, though, for the game. He's up the ball not with Natsuki, so JKS will have one for the B-bomb side, perhaps, while Kratos Faction will control the A-side. Oh. Big kill from JKS, and as already, this mid-aggression out. They got the bomb down also and all of that. They can't really hold it, though. I don't think it's going to be quite the issue at this point, but Jacob able to spray up through the smoke, going to get the reward of Noxie. Does land the shot through the doors as well. So 1962 going to be limping his way over on the A side. They're going to be speeding this one up, realizing that there could be a rotation coming around the back of them, but they decide against it. Maybe trying to see if Renegades do push and get some kills before they inevitably fall. I mean, their options are pretty slim here, right? Like, you either push site and die, or you wait and die. And they're gonna decide to at least take the initiative. They want to go out on their shield. They're not gonna wait around any longer. Reverse it, no tag, and frag. It's gonna be more of the same. No, 1962 is able to at least turn his AK towards Azza and put him down as well. But the Renegades have brought us back to a two round deficit now. Yeah, the money's getting low on sir. Their decision making has been really good lately on Renegades. Like, for instance, that round a couple ago where they decided to, you know, late aggress with Lias and Gratis Faction long because they knew that they were going to get pinched otherwise. Those are the type of decisions you have to make. I mean, it's, it's hard to late aggress because you got to really rely that your utility works, but those are the types of plays that get you rounds instead of you getting a massive positional disadvantage. And then that round, just, you know, great facing middle. And now they've won a couple in a row. They have Eserus on the ropes. We will just have a couple of deagles in this round and one CZ. So this should be 13 for Renegades. They've already taken Max down past half. Just a default opening from Isiris here as they do start leaning towards Cat. But again, they, they've got nothing to work with. They just have to hope that the deagles somehow find headshots. That's it. That is the key to success in this round. It just comes off the back of this insane individual ability. Max going to get his toes singed down to 37 on long. About this faction getting tagged up. As of though, battles back. There was a glimmer of hope with that Glock frag, but it's pretty much being put to rest. Or hold the phones for a second. How are these kills still landing? How is this a 2v2? Even Gratis if Easterus lose this, they've done so much damage already. Gratis faction missed so many shots there, Vince. It has to be said. I hate to ever really pin blame on a player, but he missed three shots on the cross. Should have at least landed one or two of those, and that's caused the two on two. As you mentioned, us. Those mistakes add up. And if Easterus take this round, it's going to be a big part of why we got to this stage. JKS and Jacob going to be walking over the corpses of their fallen teammates to try and reclaim what was once theirs. There is an orb now in the hands of Easterus, and it's going to be Max that fires it downrange. The player that was tagged up first, he took the early damage. 
And he's down, smoke onto the side. And he's gonna get picked on the cross. Isra have done it. Somehow, with a deagle and a CZ, they claim the round, they have three map points. My goodness, man. No armor, virtually no utility. Two deagles and a CZ, and they win the round. Again, it has to be mentioned, Gratis Faction missed a couple of key shots with the AWP on the cross that he should be landing. And then in the two versus two, which became a 1v1, JKS just gets a little bit unlucky. He had a smoke on the site, so maybe, you know, uh, he, he wins the 50-50 on the defuse if the op keeps missing, but... Before it could even bloom, Max took a perfectly timed peek off long platform and found the shot before it could ever come to that. And now it's map point for Isurus around earlier than anticipated. Very much should have been 14-13 and really a tight race to the finish line. But as it stands, Renegades must just muster up three rounds in a row just to get to overtime. And Vince, they've never done that. The, the biggest streak they've had this half is two in a row. Had chances, right? Like they, they have had so many opportunities. Two egos they lost together. Exactly. The last time was on B site where JKS got yep. picked off a CZ in 1962, got a second one. So, yep. I mean, this map could actually be over for Renegades. That's the mad thing. They're gonna be peeking through mid. JKS gonna get one. Three peaks on OHP. Not needed. Not required. They had the player advantage. That's gonna open up mid now for Easterus to try and make the most of. Double smoking and flashing it. There is a smoke at the entrance of B. They're gonna respect this. Flashbang through it, reverse it. Molotov to the back of the site. And now Jacob's gonna have to try and hold the line by himself. He will stumble and fall. And maybe Renegades will join him. Molotov's onto window. Gonna stop any early aggression from Renegades. They have to go for this, of course. They lose this round and it's done. Another smoke tossed into the doors. They're able to stack these. They still have a flashbang as well. There's two incendiaries that Renegades have. That could be the ace up the sleeve. Renegades gonna find Noxie off the boost. Courtesy of Gratis Faction's off. Two flashbangs over. Now the volley's gonna start to rain in. Max gonna hold his position. It's all down to reverse him. How much time can he wait? Molotov goes on to him. And there should be enough time for the defuse. Renegades, by the skin of their teeth, survive. Really handled that mid B nicely. Got the kill on mid pretty early, so that point of the attack was gone. It all came down to the B side itself. Some great work to get the bomb put on the N Sierra side, but the retake from Renegades on point. A difficult task to do, but they pull it off. Now they just need to pull off two more to first force overtime. And here's why the timeout comes in from Easter. It's they need to decide what do they want to do here. The economy is at a point where they could get a couple of players nicely bought out, but the others would really struggle. This is probably where you take a middle-of-the-road approach. You probably get some upgraded pistols and armor, maybe a couple of pieces of utility. That's probably what the talk is here. What can we afford to buy this round but not hamstring ourselves to really go for it in the end in the final round of regulation? So, yeah, here come a couple of deagles, a couple of flashbangs. They definitely calculated it right. They just don't want to buy down really past $2,500. They want to make sure they have a good full buy in the next. And plus, of course, it's been the Ecos that have been the Achilles heel of Renegades. So they can even be confident in this round that even with low pistols, and not too much to their name, they can still get this done. They're going to go for fast cap with aggression to start things off. for 1962 has found Gratis Faction. Decapitates him. Opens up catwalk control. Flashbangs are solid. Keeping the retaliation at bay. Liaz will chip in with one, but Mayan answers back instantly onto Azza. A site is taken. They're going to be able to get a bomb plant down. After this Molotov clears, Max will just walk across and get it planted. And there's nothing Renegades can do to stop it. That will change the dynamic of this round. And 1962 is going to come up with a frag. And there's the CZ. And Renegades, they have, must be absolutely devastated. This could be three Ecos in the final stretch of the half that sees them lose Dust 2. Jakey is going to have to pull off a masterful play. And there's an XM to one side and Org on the other. It's all going to be over for Renegades, and an eco is what dethrones them again. 16-13. Man, it's, it's so hard to see that happen because you feel for Renegades. I mean, you're losing ecos. Grasfax is missing out shots. He should be hitting on the A-bomb side. It's so tough, but on, on the same side, you want to praise 
Isurus for their craftiness to be able to be efficient. You know, they didn't waste away these these half buys. They they had game plans. They had pushes that were calculated. They they worked together. Their spacing was on point. They overwhelmed their opponents even with limited firepower. So you want to kind of praise again, just kind of being resourceful with very little to work with. And and honestly, you just want to praise them for their play overall because Mayor and Almost had 30 kills that game, over 180 R. Max at 25. Everyone had their moments. So, you know, this is a nice little upset here for me, Cirrus. Like, they've done exactly what you need to do in a best of three like this, which is take your map pick. Like, really levy that advantage you have over your opponent. Make sure you secure that. That sets you up to have chances later on in the half. Now, Mirage is, is going to be a tough one because if Renegades are great on that, as long as they can keep their heads right, they should be clearly favored there as well. But... This is a great little effort for me, Cirrus, but that's going to be it for us for a map here in this best of three. We do, of course, have at least one more map left to go. We have two more best of threes after this, so a long day for Vince and I here on the B stream. We thank all of you for tuning in. Hope you're enjoying the broadcast. You can follow us up if you want to, exclamation point casters in chat. You'll also see our names come up on screen here and there. But, yeah, that's going to be it for now, but we'll be back quite shortly.